Hello and welcome everybody. I hope that you are ready to geek out with me because I am. So today we're going to go through something that's uh, pretty involved but hopefully it will uh, help you. So what we're going to do today is pretty much uh, we're going to connect our WordPress website to an Amazon S3 server. So what that does is that it allows us to upload our images and host them on an Amazon S3 server. So you want to do this if um, you're trying to save space on your hosting. If you want to try to speed up the serving of your images on your website. And if you want to try to save money because uh, Amazon S3 is um, so much cheaper than trying to buy more space on your hosting provider. So just a bit of background, I am using a Linux distribution. So we're using Pop! OS. But if you're following along using Windows or Mac, uh, we're doing a lot of things web-based anyway. So everything should be uh, about the same. So let's get started. So I've logged into my WordPress dashboard here. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the plugin. So we're going to add new plugin. And we're going to search for WP Offload Media Lite. So we've got it here. This is the one. Install. All right, so that's finished installing. We're going to activate that. And there it is. It's activated. We're going to switch gears a little bit for now. So if you haven't already signed up, um, go ahead and sign up for an account for Amazon Web Services. So here's the link, uh, aws.amazon.com. I already have an account, so I will be logging in. So if you're signing in, you might be taken into this screen. Just go ahead and sign in as the root user. Um, I don't really know enough about the IM user. Uh, everything we're going to do is uh, for the administration anyway. So root user should be OK. So I'm just going to log in. And this should be your first screen that you see. So the AWS Management Console. So you may not have this tab open yet. But if we're look, the service that we're looking for is S3. So I'm just going to search for it to open up our S3 console. And I've already got a bucket set up over here, but I'll go through the process of how to set up a new bucket. So we'll go ahead and create a new bucket. We'll give it a name. In this case, I'm just going to call it Victoriano com because my website is victorianodejesus.com I'm in Australia so I will pick the uh, server that's closest to me and we'll keep these settings for now and we'll create a bucket by the way in order to avoid any sort of issues with creating a bucket or managing your uh, the, the Amazon S3 backend make sure that you turn off all of your ad blockers so i've got a couple of ad blockers here in my web browser so i'm just going to turn that off and that's already off so that will most likely solve a lot of your problems i'm going to refresh the page here notice that our bucket is currently not public so we're going to change that so i'm going to log in to our bucket here we'll go to permissions and what's worked for me in the past is actually to make the bucket public but we're going to set some policies to restrict the access so i'm just going to untick that save it's going to ask you to confirm that's fine okay so now this would be a public bucket now if we go back, we can see that our uh, objects can be public now for our new bucket. We're going to go ahead and add a policy to it. So we'll go back into permissions and we'll click on bucket policy. And we're going to add this policy here. Now I'll link in my blog or in the description this code so that you can copy and paste it. 
and we're going to change this to whatever bucket name that you've got set up. So in my case, that was Victoriano Kong. Save. And it'll tell you that this bucket has public access and we're good to go. Going back to our main uh, buckets area here, we can see that it is now public. The next step that we're going to take is we're going to create a IM user and a policy. So we'll go back to our console here and let's search for IAM to log into that console. Again, you want to check whether or not your uh, ad blockers are off because I've had some issues here in the past where some of the ad blockers uh, made it act funny. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new user. So click on users, add user, and we'll add in a username. So in this case, I'm just going to say victoriano.com. That's the user. And then allow programmatic access. Click on next. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to attach a policy for this user. So click on attach existing policies. And then we're actually going to create one create policy. Notice that it opened up a new tab here and we'll click on the JSON editor. Now I'm going to switch over to my text editor here so we can copy and paste that code. Again, I will link to the description this code or in my blog so if you want to copy and paste it yourself you can check it out over there. Okay, and we're going to change our bucket name to the name of our bucket. So in this case, it was victoriano-com. Same thing in this line below. Click on review policy. We'll give the policy a name. In this case, I'm just going to call it victoriano underscore bucket. Everything else looks good. Create policy. Done. So our policy has been created. We're going to switch back to our um, IM console. We'll click on refresh here so that it'll find our new policy and we'll search for that policy so we can attach it. And there it is. Next. Tags are optional, so we'll just click on next again to review. That is fine. Create user. So we've successfully added a new user here. I'm going to gray this out, but you're going to get a couple of things. You're going to get an access key ID and a secret access key. And you can decide to show that if you want by clicking on the show button. We're going to need this handy. So what I'll do is I'm just going to copy this access key ID and paste it into a text editor. There we go. And the secret access key as well, I'm going to copy and then paste it into my text editor. We're going to need both of these. And that's pretty much it for our Amazon console now. So we're going to switch back to WordPress. All right, so we're back to our WordPress here. So we're done with our Amazon uh, Web Services console. So that's all set up, ready to go. We need to edit our WP config file. So depending on what your hosting um, provider is like, um, I usually log into my website using um, FTP. So I've got FileZilla over here. I've logged into my site. I'm just gonna refresh that. So your WP config file should be located in your HTTP docs. This is it over here. I'm going to download this to my local machine. There we go. I'm going to switch over to my file manager. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this so that we've got a backup in, in case anything goes haywire. Now I'm going to edit this with our text editor. And we're going to add a couple of lines. Again, 
I'm going to link in the description what those lines are. And I'm just added them in here. I'm going to make a comment first so that in case we need to delete it, we know where to find it. So I'm just going to call it WFE Offload Media Lite to S3 Setup. You can say whatever you want, but that's enough for me to take note that that is what it is. And I'm going to copy and paste this code. Again, I will link to the description what this is. And we're going to put our access key ID in here in this field. And we're going to put our secret access key in this field. Obviously, I've grayed this out for privacy reasons, but you know what I mean. All right. So we'll go ahead and save that document. Exit out of that. I'm logged back into FileZilla over here. I'm just going to refresh so that we've got the most recent files. And this is my local machine copy here. I'm going to overwrite the one that's on my website. So I'll just drag and drop. And I'll ask me if I want to overwrite. Yes. And that's it. We should be done. So we'll go back to our WordPress website here. We'll make sure that we refresh the page. So I've already, I've already done that. Um, we're going to go into the settings for our WP Offload Media Lite. Make sure you select Amazon S3 as your provider. We're going to type in our bucket list here. So that was victoriano-com, save bucket setting. And I'm going to tweak a couple of the settings here. So what I'll do is, um, this is probably turned off. I'm going to remove files from the server. That just means that once a file has been copied to the bucket, it's going to get um, deleted from your local server and it now lives on the Amazon S3 server. This would have been turned off. I'm going to force HTTPS. Um, you want to turn this on, rewrite the media URLs, uh, turn all of these other stuff turned on and I've kept uh, most of it at the default and that should be pretty much it. So we'll go ahead and save changes. Now to check if this has worked for you, we're going to go into our media and we're going to try to upload a photo. So I'm just going to add a new photo here. I'm just going to pick a random photo that I've got downloaded. So we've got this here. Now that it's uploaded, the way that we want to check is let's click on that photo. And you should see here at the bottom that it's changed it to the Amazon web server. So S3 AP, whatever it is, right? And that's how I know it worked. So it rewrote that, um, that URL. So another way to check is if we go back to our AWS console, We'll log back into our S3 server. And we'll check out the bucket that we created here. And you should see some files. So there we go. So there's the WP content uploads 2020 gives today's date and the version and there's our images. So you can go ahead and just upload whatever photos that you've got onto here. Um, the plugin will automatically process it and offload it to your Amazon S3 server. And Bob's your uncle, that's it. So another cool thing about this is, let's say for example, if I delete this um, image, so you could do some cleanup on the WordPress side. So let's just delete that permanently. If we go back, to our Amazon S3 console here. I'm going to refresh the page. 
notice that it also deletes it on your bucket so there it is the files are gone we're just gonna go back here to check it out it's gone there's nothing in our bucket and that is it for today guys I hope that you found this tutorial helpful I know that it really did help me because um, I had to upload a whole bunch of photos onto my uh, business website and uh, it blew up the hosting and they were gonna charge me so much money so I had to get creative and find a cheaper way to do this so it's been working great for me I've had no issues um, Amazon Web Services is pretty cool if you like this content I hope you found it helpful hope you find it simple enough the best way to support content and the channel is just to subscribe so check out the links in the description below for the write-up uh, some of the copies of the uh, the codes and if you've got any questions just write it up in the comments hopefully I can help that is it today talk to you later bye bye